Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time we have a review of the Mac Studio that we have hooked up back here. Let's get started. Remember that this is one of Apple's most powerful offerings, however, still above it is the Mac Pro, which already integrates the entire Apple Silicon architecture. With this equipment and the most recent Mac Pro, Apple has completed its transition from Intel to its own processors, and with this it has gained a lot of efficiency because energy consumption has dropped considerably, and little by little more applications have been optimized to this new architecture. Although not yet 100%, then it will also depend on what applications you use the most to know if you should switch to a computer of this style or not yet. Before telling you about its price, let me tell you a little about its design because this will be the only part of the review where we will be putting camera shots since the rest of the review will be a screen recording directly with the Mac so you can see several of its functions and also its performance even recording the screen. So, the design is one of the strongest points of this computer, without a doubt. If you compare it against what you might find in the world of PCs, this is definitely a beautiful computer and it's also very compact if you compare it against what you might find again in the world of assembled or branded PCs, which generally need a lot more cooling than what this computer needs. So here we're looking at something very compact, very power efficient and also very quiet. Again, compared to the Windows alternatives which have much louder fans, here the fan doesn't even sound but but it does have ventilation. You can notice it on the back where we have the grill, which also has a nice design. On that back, we also have several Thunderbolt connectors. We also have a wired internet connector in case you prefer a more stable connection, although the wireless connectivity is very good. Personally, I have not connected wired internet and the experience has been very positive. Then it also has the power connector, which is a must have. And it has two USB-A ports, also very high speed. In this case, I connected my audio interface there. I think it is still a good idea to keep Keep some connectors of this style, although they are no longer so modern, but there are still many devices that have this type of connection, so it comes in handy. In fact, we also have an alternative audio output in case you want to connect a different system or headphones, and we also have the on-off button. That's basically all we have on the back which will remain pretty much hidden, giving also a very clean feeling on the front because actually the cables are very well hidden. And if you combine it with an Apple display, with the Magic Trackpad and with the Magic Keyboard, it definitely makes the experience even cleaner, although this is not necessary. You can connect your own monitor, your own keyboard and your own mouse if you want, but obviously the cleanest experience will be this setup that I have here behind me. On the front it still gives us two additional Thunderbolt 4 connectors and we have an SD card slot, which I really appreciate because if you're a content creator who shoots with a camera, it's definitely a lot easier to be transferring content this way and avoid any additional adapters. If you record with a cell phone, obviously it's recommended to record with an iPhone so you can transfer everything via AirDrop without any problems wirelessly and very fast. But if you record with Android, you could use an app that I usually use to send content from all the devices I'm reviewing, which is called Local Send, available on the App Store, also available on Play Store and most stores. The truth is that the transfer is also made very easy and it is a good solution that I have found, although there are also many other solutions that you could come up with, but definitely being a Mac, the perfect interaction will be with iPhone. However, you can also send and receive content from Android devices. Finally, here in front we also have an LED that will help us to know the status of the equipment and that's it. As you can see, it is an extremely clean design unlike most Windows devices that have powerful configurations. Most components of this style in Windows come with RGB lights. Personally, I really dislike that overly flashy aesthetic, so Apple goes for this super simple and minimalistic design that is personally very pleasing to the eye. We also have quite sharp edges that generate again a feeling of a very premium device. 
Even a little detail is that the bottom has a small relief to make it look like the product is floating and this small detail again makes the design go up a notch and is undoubtedly one of the strongest points. It may not be the most powerful computer there is going to be today, but it may be the most powerful computer within the most beautiful computers. So having said that, let's go inside the computer and I'll tell you about the prices. And well, we're already right into the Mac Studio, where by the way, we're recording this very audio that you're listening to. So while we are recording the audio, we are going to do some other tests so that you yourself can corroborate the speed that we could have here. Here are the prices. There are several configurations available as you will see. The most basic one starts at 45,999 pesos. On the screen you see the reference price in dollars to give you an idea, but remember that the prices here are not the same as over there. The basic difference will be the processor, which in the most expensive edition is the M2 Ultra. It must be said that in this case I am testing this processor. However, you can still go configuring to add more things. And in this case, I am testing the addition that has even more cores, which as you can see, adds a bit of price. You can also increase the unified memory, which will be used as RAM and video memory. You can go up to 192 gigabytes, which is also the version I am testing. And you can also increase the storage, which can go up to 8 terabytes of solid state storage. So in total, this is the version that I'm testing. 212,999 pesos. On screen the reference price in dollars to give you an idea. And you could still add specialized Apple software here. What I like is that it doesn't require a subscription. So having said that, remember that you can also customize the base version. Whether you want to increase the processor cores or also the unified memory or the storage. Now let's get to testing. Uh, to start with, we are going to open applications quickly so that you can see more or less what the speed is, which is definitely super high, even in applications that are more complex like Adobe Premiere, which I'm already opening. Notice how fast it finishes opening. A browser other than Safari may take longer to open, but I still think it can open pretty fast. Here I am opening Photoshop. Now I'm going to open Lightroom. And so I'm going to keep opening multiple applications so that we're also testing RAM at the same time. Now I'm opening Illustrator, which is the first time I'm opening it, by the way. So it may take a little bit longer. Audition was already running. And finally, I'm going to open this one, which is the one that I do the transfer of content from Android to Mac. So as you can see, we have all of this open and it really behaves very well. Even in these animations, like to see all the open applications, definitely that the behavior is totally good. I'm even going to open some documents on some other desktop because these document tasks are extremely simple anyway. So they don't represent even a little bit of workload for this device. But anyway, I want to open several things so you'll be able to see the performance yourself. Remember, I'm working with the version with the highest amount of RAM. So it is practically impossible to fill the RAM of this machine with this kind of basic tasks. As you notice, everything flows super fast. Even in the web browser, let me open several tabs. Well, I already have a few tabs open here, while absolutely everything else is open documents and of course we have also on the main desktop Photoshop but we don't have any projects open yet so let me open up a few images here these are three high resolution images which I have loaded at the moment as you can see I can move between them without any problem as well in fact we're going to try out some of Photoshop's smart features like object selection this is the first time I'm going to activate it and notice how fast it already split and recognized all this stuff with artificial intelligence Photoshop thanks to all the power that this processor has. So it's definitely very good. Let's go to the other image and look at that again very fast. It's already got the detection of all these elements ready. A super good performance, especially because notice that the resolution of the image is really quite high. So we are looking at a lot of power. Here we have another image and again all the recognition is super super easy without any problems. Now let's keep Photoshop open and let's open up some other things. Well here in Lightroom we also have this photograph. 
Without any kind of problem, we could work here. Photo editing is not that complex, especially if we're talking about individual photos. But even look, I'm going to export 82 photographs. Now that I've selected all the ones that I've already added here, let's set it to export them in large JPG. And we're going to put them here in Lightroom Saved Photos, Export, and I'm going to talk right now, in real time, so you can see more or less how fast it's exporting them. I think it's doing it pretty fast, honestly. He's already about halfway through the pictures. And it's obviously applying different color adjustments that I made. And in the full resolution of the photograph. So, also for batch photo editing, I think it's working pretty fast, as you can tell. So, let's move on to another task, because this one is done. Now let's open some vectors in Illustrator, which I already have over here loaded. Although for some reason Photoshop wants to open them, so let me see. And now I'm going to open them from Illustrator and let's see how fast it opens them. There it is, as you can see we already have one open. I'm going to open more and that's it. I already have several vector projects here and everything is open at the same time. The images are still here in Photoshop. There's still all the browser stuff here without any problems. The documents are still here too. There's not even a little bit of slowdown on the computer, of course. Now let's go back to Illustrator just to show how smoothly everything works. In fact, let's try to resize all these vectors at the same time. And look, it looks like it already feels like a little bit of a heavier workload here. But I still find that it performs quite well considering the number of vectors that are around here. Especially in these other ones that have a ton of detail. So, I quite like the performance that we're seeing. We're going to move some things around here as well. Notice how this is all perfectly well placed. We have a lot more vectors here as well. And everything performs super, super smooth. Very fluid. No problems whatsoever. But we are going to continue opening projects without closing anything we already have open so far. Now, I'm going to open some more things in Photoshop. So, look at the speed at which it can open as well. Let's set it to OK and that's it. And notice that in this case we are talking about a document that also has several layers and sublayers and folders here. So the experience is also very good. The speed at which it opens is really surprising. Let's open even more so you can continue to see the performance. Here's another one. And it takes a few seconds and we've got it. Again, that's several releases we have over here. Let's go with one more. And we're still going to open up another one. To continue testing this RAM, I think this will be enough, although we still have another file over here that we downloaded so we can put in as heavy a test as possible. So you see, even this one already has several pages and we can move perfectly well between these pages by applying zoom with the magic trackpad without any kind of problem. The experience is really very good. We come back this way, we continue moving between all these images that we already had. We can move everything without any problem, without any inconvenience. And we are going to take note now of the other projects to see if they are still open. Perfectly fine, absolutely everything is there. In fact, we now have Adobe Premiere and we're going to send some videos from the iPhone via AirDrop so you can see how easy it is. It just pops up the notification over here, save to downloads, and it's already sending all these videos wirelessly. And now I'm going to embed them over here. We're going to put them in and we're going to make a composite with all of them without any editing. We're just going to cut in one minute to do the same test that we always do. So there we have one minute of clips spliced together, recorded in 4K, and that's it. These clips have been recorded with iPhone, so I'm guessing it's going to be even better optimized codec for Mac, so it should work very fast. Let's set this to export with the default settings and see how long it takes. 3, 2, 1, and we're on. That's it, it took about 14 seconds. And remember that we are talking about 4K video, in this case at 30 frames per second, so really it works very well. But if you want to work even smoother, what you should do is use Final Cut Pro and Apple Codex, because definitely with this, the experience, I guess, will be faster. Here I was doing some tests, so you can see that I've been working with it, it really works very well.
But now we're going to do exactly the same thing we did in Premiere from Final Cut. So we have the same videos. We're going to cut again when we get to one minute and we're done with our project. Remember, we still have absolutely everything open, including Premiere. And now let's see how long it would take to export it. Notice that I'm going to use the Apple ProRes source codec because with this codec, it's going to export much faster. Although the video is also going to be quite heavy. But we have 8 TB of storage, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's put it to export. One, two, three. And as you notice, up here he's working. And it's just about done. It's done. It took four seconds. It's brutal the speed that you can achieve editing with the Apple ProRes codec using Final Cut. Really, it's completely amazing. But for the more complex test, I contacted my friend Sam Tobias, director of Detonante VFX, a visual effects studio. To help me execute one of his many projects, I invite you to follow him. If you're interested in the whole world of VFX, he's not only on Instagram, but also on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. And I invite you to also follow Detonante VFX, where they showcase all the work they've done, which is really super, super advanced. So thanks a lot to Sam for helping us test this computer with an even heavier project. First we ran a project in Unreal, a graphics engine, and it gave us a few grams per second in GPU. And just to give you an idea, a machine with the RTX 4090 graphics, it was coming in at about 80 frames per second or so. So I think in raw power in GPU, it's still not at the top of what we would like. But you have to consider that here we have very low power consumption, a super compact size and virtually zero heat compared to what we would have with the graphics card that I mentioned to you. On the other hand, we also ran a project in Nuke to test the processor power. It took about 3 minutes and 38 seconds to render all of this, whereas on an Intel Core i9 computer, it took about 2 minutes and 42 seconds. However, it should be considered that this Nuke application is not yet optimized for Apple's architecture. So anyway, it is quite amazing how it manages to translate all the code and render the whole project without an abysmal difference in time. Surely when this application is optimized for the entire Apple architecture, it will be totally amazing. For reference, a computer running Resin 9 took 4 minutes and 45 seconds on the same project. After all these tests, I can conclude that this computer is spectacular for those who want to have a very minimalist setup without fan noise, without too much heating and without such a high power consumption. For the vast majority of everyday applications, it will run too fast, especially if you use all Apple applications that are perfectly optimized. On the other hand, if you're a user who needs specialized apps and raw GPU power, it's probably not the time yet. However, it seems to me that Apple is on a very good path. Hopefully soon more applications will continue to be optimized for this new architecture. For the moment, we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can tell us about it and we'll see you next time.